Hi everyone, this is Kimia Shayestefar. Today I'm going to present graph transfer learning paper. Let me start with the problem of graph transfer learning. Suppose we have two graphs A and B with similar structure. We know the labels on graph A. These labels can be, for example, membership in a cluster, susceptibility to an infection during a cascade, page rank scores, or centrality. We know the labels on graph A, but we don't know the labels on graph B. Note labels such as community membership, susceptibility to an infection, and centrality may be functions of structural properties of a node, and as a result may be transferable across graphs. Our goal is to use the labels on graph A to predict the labels on graph B. A related problem to the one that we study here is predicting labels in a single graph. In this setting, we have a graph and labels on some nodes of graph and trying to predict the labels on nodes from the same graph. This problem has been studied extensively. The approach that people usually use is graph embedding. Graph embedding produces lower dimensional representation of nodes in the graph. These lower dimensional representations are used for downstream discriminative tasks, so we train a classifier over the embeddings. How does this happen? There is a neural network that uses as input an adjacency matrix and produces the embeddings. Once we have the embeddings, there is an additional component. We add a prediction model on top of the embeddings. This prediction model maps the node embeddings to the labels. Some standard graph embedding methods are Laplacian eigenmaps, graph factorization, graph, node to vec, and graph stage. None of these methods have convex loss function. Therefore, their embeddings are not unique. This non-uniqueness implies that embeddings of the same graph or two isomorphic graphs can be vastly different at two different executions of the algorithm. They can be rotations or permutations of each other. The existence of multiple solutions create problems. I'm going to illustrate this with an example. Suppose we have two isomorphic graphs A and B. We take graph A and create embeddings by, for example, Laplacian eigenmaps. Suppose the eyes are the optimal embedding vectors for uh, graph A. We take graph B and produce its node embedding. The embeddings of graph B are rotations of embeddings of graph A. We use the embeddings uh, of graph A to train an almost perfect classifier between two classes. Then, we transfer the classifier turn on graph A to graph B. As we can see, the classifier fails to correctly classify exactly the same graphs when the embeddings are rotated. Long story short, embedding trend across the two graphs can be misaligned. This suggests that embeddings across graphs need to be trained jointly, maintaining an appropriate alignment. In this work, we combine classification and embedding losses with a continuous convex coupling penalty motivated by tractable graph distances. This allows to solve in continuous domain without realignment. We propose an implement an alternating minimization algorithm that jointly embeds the two graphs. We extensively evaluate our proposed graph transfer learning methodology over several synthetic and real-life datasets. In our model, we train node embeddings jointly. There is a neural network parameterized by weights WA and a neural network parameterized by weights WB. One of them takes graph A and produces the embeddings. The other one takes graph B and produces its node embeddings. Node embeddings loss function for graph A and B are functions of topological similarity and embedding similarity of nodes. We have a node label prediction loss function in graph A. It can be, for example, a square error, logistic, or cross entropy. The prediction model is parameterized by weights W prime. 
In our model, we want to do two things. First, we want to find the mapping between the nodes in two graphs. Second, we want the nodes that map to each other have similar embeddings. For this purpose, we first compute pairwise distance for every two pairs of embeddings across graphs in matrix D. We take all possible pairwise embeddings and compute the distance between them. We have a doubly stochastic matrix P that couples the node of the two graphs and their embeddings together through the penalty. This penalty function enforces the nodes that are structurally similar across graphs receive proximal embeddings. This coupling penalty is convex. The first step in this penalty function enforces graph alignment. And the second term enforces the embeddings to follow the mapping. Our overall objective looks like this. The objective jointly determines the embedding of nodes in two graphs by two weight parameters, WA and WB. The label classifier is parameterized by weight W prime. And there is a double stochastic matrix P that enforces the nodes that are structurally similar across graphs receive similar embeddings. Our method can be applied to all graph embedding methods. We perform a series of experiments on synthetic and real-life graphs. In our synthetic graphs, we have a two-cluster bipartite -like graph, four-cluster stochastic block model graph, and six-cluster stochastic block model graph. Our real-world graphs are Zakari Karate Club, email, and infectious disease transmission datasets. We summarize the information for all graphs in this table. We put the number of nodes, number of edges, and number of clusters. We cover a wide range of graph sizes in our experiments. During our experiments, we initially have graph A. Graph B is a random permutation of graph A plus noise. We use training set to train on graph A by training on 80% of nodes. We use the remaining 20% of nodes in graph A as a test set. The test set on graph A is a more classic thing to do. We also test on graph B, which is the graph transfer learning problem. We predict two types of labels, clustering labels and epidemic spread or influence labels. Both of these labels are structural. For clustering labels, each node is assigned with a single integer valued label to one of the clusters it belongs to. And influence labels are generated with independent cascade model. We have two metrics to assess our model performance, accuracy and root mean square error. We use accuracy on clustering tasks and root mean square error for regression tasks. Higher accuracy is better. Also for root mean square error, the smaller it is, the better. We use the naive solution for node to weight graph embedding method and measure accuracy and root mean square error, both predicting labels in graph A and in graph B. When we see the performance scores on graph A, the results are really good. But when we transfer the learned model from graph A to graph B, we can see there is a huge gap between the performance scores on graph A and B. This is evident by the close to random guess accuracy for classification task and high root mean square error for the regression task over graph B. We use the naive solution with several other standard graph embedding methods and for all of them we observe that when it comes to transferring a learned model from graph A to B, none of the examined methods are successful. In all methods, the accuracy score drops and root mean square error increases in the task of transfer learning. We also observe that no to weak algorithm has superior prediction performance for both training and testing subsets on graph A. For this reason, in our next experiments, we use this method to produce embeddings for naive solution and also our method. These are the same results as showed before, but on more graphs. 
For all these graphs, I'm showing you the performance of the naive method we just saw before, and again we saw this huge drop in the performance on the task of transfer learning. When we use our graph transfer learning algorithm, we observe that our method attained almost the same test accuracy on graph B as in graph A. Sometimes it performs even better. This indicates that the classifier trend on graph A is successfully transferred to graph B. We have studied the effects of adding noise to graphs on label prediction performance. We compare three methods, naive solution, our model, and strong benchmark in which we assume we know the mapping of nodes in advance. In order to add noise, we take graph B, remove a percent of edges, and add it back the same number of edges to the graph. We compare the performance of model for different noise levels, and we can see that for the naive solution from the beginning, the model is performing poorly. For our model, up until 10%, uh, our model is almost not affected with the noise. And uh, up until around 25%, we can see that the transferability is possible. For the perfect alignment method, we can see that it's following the same trend as our model, just it, uh, the performance drops with a delay. In conclusion, our work offers a strong evidence that structural labels can be successfully transferred across graphs using embeddings. We can potentially learn disease propagation in a graph and transfer it to a new graph. Accelerating our methods and scaling them to larger graphs is still an important open problem. Thank you for your attention.